Good evening, everyone. This is the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Friday, July 6, 2012. Here's a look what's coming up. Tonight, warning shots will not be fired. Army Manual outlines plan to kill rioters and confiscate constitutionally protected firearms. We also cover TSA's new policy, ordering travelers to freeze on command. And Aaron Dyke sits down with John Loftus, author of America's Nazi Secret, to discuss the ties between the U.S. government and the Nazi regime of World War II and what it means to us today. All this, plus a special video from Alex Jones on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. So as you can see, we have another jam-packed and informative show lined up for you this evening. But we begin tonight with a newly leaked U.S. Army military police training manual for what they are calling civil disturbance operations. The Army manual outlines the plan to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. That's right. They have plans to confiscate our firearms and kill American citizens on U.S. soil. This during a mass civil unrest, which of course will be engineered by the foreign banks who now run our military. Warning shots will not be fired. Use of deadly force authorized. And this of course is the top story right now on Infowars.com. The PDF document, which is dated in 2006, well it was used for a self-learning course at the U.S. Army Military Police School at Fort McClellan, and it makes it clear that operations apply to both inside and outside the continental United States. The document outlines how military assets will be used to restore and maintain law and order by shooting protesters, I guess, shooting innocent civilians, perhaps. And it goes on to describe how prisoners will be processed through internment camps. Wow. So there you have it. Our own military being trained for armed conflict with U.S. citizens. They're being trained to confiscate our guns and preparations to process us into camps during civil unrest. And we are now joined by Dan Fight, who is an investigative journalist for HongPong.com. He's also a uh, graphic artist and web designer. And you initially broke the story, and I was, I was wanting you on today. I was wondering if you could briefly go over the document and tell us how you got your hands on it to begin with. Yeah, I mean, uh, all the credit is really due here to a really excellent website called publicintelligence.net. They do a really good job uh, systematically finding uh, obscure and limited access files from uh, within the U.S. military and other institutions. Um, I just saw it pop up uh, yesterday and uh, quickly wrote a summary of it for my own site to get that distributed and out there. Um, essentially, uh, this uh, document ties to a number of other documents which I've been involved in researching uh, in my uh, personal experience, I covered the 2008 Republican National Convention and uh, the 2009 uh, G20 conference in Pittsburgh um, through the G Infinity Media uh, Center that was independent media that was put together. And so uh, what we have here is a system of expanding, um, you know, emergency use of domestic military personnel. Um, and at one level uh, that I found the research on earlier, uh, there's something called a CON Plan 3502, Civil Disturbance Operations Concept of of operations plan run by the U.S. Northern Command, and uh, that was what we found earlier, and uh, public intelligence uh, has also helped pull together some other documents from that, and so what we found here was essentially the military police training document to instruct the military police in a number of different uh, important aspects of uh, this general domestic operations uh, planning, including uh, domestic uh, searches without warrants. Uh, there's only, there's no reference to warrants or those type of constitutional rights in this. Um, this also includes uh, various aspects of uh, crowd control, area control, uh, riot control, and uh, some really kind of terrifying statements about how uh, military-operated detention facilities inside the United States would uh, be protected by lethal force, including the statement that warning shots will not be fired in the event that someone is trying to escape. As soon as they 
deem a risk of lethal injury, they're just going to shoot you. And uh, it's it's helpful to have these things on on paper and concrete to establish uh, the different levels of this uh, planning structure. And I think that what we're going to see um, at the Republican and Democratic National Conventions later this year, which are national special security events, uh, we're going to see very similar planning frameworks activated that are very uh, reminiscent of this. And this document is from April 2006. It was used at the Fort McClellan, Alabama, U.S. Army Military uh, Police School. And um, I would presume there's probably been a few tweaks to this document since then. And I was able to find an earlier version of the document from uh, many, many years before. I think it was from the 80s. Um, so this has been revised before. Um, and in the, there's a lot of continuities. It involves a lot of stuff about troop formations, certain riot control weapons, uh, things like that, as well as uh, it, it talks about how uh, a task force of domestically would have its own psyops unit and uh, psychological operations, I believe, are not legal for the U.S. military. Well, to let me let me stop you right there for a second, because I thought that was m one of the more interesting. The whole thing is interesting, and I'm still combing through it. You know, I just uh, got access to it today, but it talks about internment camps where internees will be re-educated. OK, this they talk about into developing an appreciation of of U.S. policies. Mm -hmm. So um, what does that mean? I mean, so uh, if you and I don't agree with U.S. policies, we're out there protesting, how are they going to re-educate us? Yeah. Um, I, I think that's uh, the earlier document that you're talking about that was uh, more specifically uh, in detail to the management of the detention facilities, which, uh, you know, surfaced a few months ago. This one is a little bit more general than that. It doesn't go quite to that. It mainly has to do with saying this is our escalation of force inside the detention facilities. It, I, it, as, I didn't notice anything about it getting to the uh, re-education of people, but it, it does get to the uh, degree of force that will be enabled. And uh, it also talks about how... Uh, uh, things like gasoline, uh, firearms can be restricted. And I think what we saw during Hurricane Katrina, um, which happened right around the same kind of time as this was released, that the military was behaving in much the same way. They were attempting to seize firearms from people without Fourth Amendment uh, warrants and procedures, and because probably they were trained as military police to not worry about the Fourth Amendment in, in terms of things like firearms. It also gets a lot to uh, uh, military intelligence, uh, analyzing protest groups and, and things of that nature. Um, so it, it's really a, a, a broad kind of like ground level, you know, sort of grunts, uh, MPs, like this is how it, in the situation of large riots, this is what we would do. And so in the 1990s, during uh, the LA riots, um, the old plan, which was called the Garden Plot, which was Con Plan 3502's predecessor, um, would have entailed uh, training uh, very similar to this in terms of how they were, uh, you know, trying to manage crowds and that kind of thing. And so uh, I think what people need to look at if they're trying to research into this is what are the parameters of this intelligence uh, situation when they're going to collect intelligence? You know, this doesn't talk about advanced agencies like the Defense Intelligence Agency or the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which does a lot of, you know, kind of compiling of data together. And um, I, I just think that uh, this, while this shows uh, a very certain heavily militarized tactics, it shows, you know, when they line up people that are suited up as riot police, these are the psychological tactics to intimidate protesters and that kind of thing, um, as well as, again, uh, run detention facilities that are patrolled with lethal force. Um, well, it, and it I'm out, looking at, I'm looking at the document right now, definitely a show of force, intimidation, primary function of the military will be breaking up unauthorized gatherings, they're going to be uh, patrolling the streets, uh, they're going to be looking for any disturbance areas, uh, prevent lawless acts, they, uh, I wonder what they consider an unauthorized gathering, you know, I mean, this, right. this is crazy, uh, military forces will be present uh, to show, uh, like I said before, a show of force intimidation. They will mm -hmm. establish roadblocks, which they're already doing in California, by the way, to stop mm -hmm. drunk drivers. And they will break up crowds, employ crowd control, uh, conduct street patrols. And, um, you know, I mean, this is scary stuff. I mean, yeah. tell us about some of the deadly force and the non-lethal force. What kind of weapons will they be using? Well, I mean, essentially they're authorized to, um, you know, what they say is defend themselves or defend against serious... 
ele you know, elements of what they call critical infrastructure, which could be any like large corporations or banks or that kind of thing. It, it's a real, uh, a broad spectrum of things which they're, you know, essentially authorized to use force under. But what's frustrating about these documents is that they, they really are clearly not written in reference to constitutional government or limited government at all. Like there's no uh, representation of the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Fourth Amendment, uh, you know, for searches, uh, the right of people to, you know, possess firearms well, and civil because emergencies. It's martial law. You know? Because right. it's martial law, everything's out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and this, there are direct references to the phrase martial law in this okay. document. They say that, well, only under curfew could the military under federal control really under, only under martial law could they impose a curfew, but we will definitely support local official, officials when they're running curfews. So everything that's sort of like underneath a full-scale martial law, like this is the kind of pattern and the kind of information which uh, you should review and have a good sense of whenever you feel like you might encounter, uh, you know, any military uh, acting domestically, even if it's not a, a full-blown, complete martial law scenario, they're still going to kind of be acting along this pattern, you know, again, as we saw in Katrina. So as we want to try to get an understanding of these things, um, as well as hopefully intervene politically and, and get these kinds of things revealed and out in the open and, and not secret. I mean, I think personally, if we're in detained in military facilities like this thing lays out, we do deserve warning shots. Like, could we demand that from our congressional representatives? <laughs> you know, we have to basically look at how to reform these policies, as well as obviously, you know, showing everybody, the public elected officials and everyone, and, you know, good people in the military and, you know, uh, bureaucracy. Well, that's too, that that's this isn't okay. That's this exactly is, right there. The we need to get this information out to all our friends and family who are in the military. Um, because, you know, our military is waking up to this as well. It, they're starting to come to the realization that they are working for the offshore banking cartels who run them and who are turning them against their own people. So, and I, and I for one, have friends who are uh, in active military as both of veterans, and they're simply not going to stand for it. So, in closing, uh, anything else you'd like to add before we go? Oh, uh, you know, I just think that everybody, you know, can do this kind of research. A lot of primary source stuff comes out. Uh, sites like publicintelligence.net and uh, cryptome.org is another really good one. You find a lot of really excellent gems, and then people need to pick these things apart, pass them around, start finding new ones, and start trying to suss out new sources, because they're trying to clamp down on leaks, uh, you know, right now as fast as they can and build a much tighter secret government. And it's really important for all of us to work against that, because we can clearly see from this kind of documents that uh, the the planning is not really congruent what we think of, uh, you know, as an open society, as a limited constitutional government. We can clearly see that's not the way that these kind of things tend to be set up. That's right. Hey, before we go, I almost forgot to ask you, uh, you're the one that brought this to our attention, the DRE program in Minneapolis where the uh, police officers at Occupy Wall Street uh, protest events, they were giving illicit drugs reportedly to uh, teenagers. Whatever happened to all yeah. that? Well, I, essentially, um, I worked with a you know a significantly large group of people from several different organizations to help bring that news forward. The accounts of people that were given drugs and uh, offered drugs to become informants and that kind of thing. Um, it prompted a very large uh, national discussion about similar things happening, similar tactics, uh, drugs being used in informant contexts. So I think that was. Uh, helpful to uh, raise awareness that that type of tactic exists. However, um, on the local level and the state level here, um, people like the FBI and the Bureau of Criminal Apprehension have been asking questions. Um, a, a few fingers got pointed when uh, one officer stepped forward and said, yes, this was going on. But since then, they've tried really, really hard to bury it. Uh, they just want to pretend that it never happened. They want to forget that all of this happened. But that's not going to work. People are going to keep pressuring them to spit out the truth, uh, you know, come to their final reports and then get some reform at the legislature because the underlying DRE program itself is kind of ridiculous. It uh, is used to just basically deem that people are intoxicated based on certain physiological symptoms that are not substantiated. So even on that level, the program is ridiculous. And I could predict that people are going to want to uh, intervene further against this thing. Well, and thanks to you for bringing attention to, you know, to the public. Otherwise, who knows what would be going on. So, hey, Dan Fight, thank you for joining us once again. Keep us posted on any developments on the training manuals, all that stuff. It's good to have you uh, on our side, and we look forward to talking to you again. Hey, thank you so much. Uh, it's great to be with you. All right, take care. All right, once again, our top story on Infowars.com. 
Army manual outlines plan to kill rioters and demonstrators in America. You can download the PDF document and see it for yourself. Also, Kurt Nimmo has added a detailed report about the document's plans for gun confiscation. Again, all this information breaking right now on our website. And at the beginning of that interview, you know, I've got so many of these documents are being released, it's really hard to keep track of all these. But we're talking about the re-education camps. This is a related document that was also recently released. A leaked U.S. Army document prepared for the Department of Justice, excuse me, Department of Defense, contains shocking plans for political activists to be pacified by PSYOP officers into developing an appreciation of U.S. policies. So there you go. Those uh, people will be de detained in prison camps inside the United States. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, a 